my time at Sandrock. It's just released and there's a lot to do and a lot to take in. Here are 15 beginner tips to get you started in your new life as a builder out in the desert. When you first get to Sandrock, you'll start getting your first assignments, but I highly encourage you to spend some time greeting the townsfolk. Not only will it start your relationship log with them, but some of them will also give you items that may prove to be useful along the way. Due to the desert environment, there won't be lush farmland to grow crops, so you'll spend a lot of the early days scavenging and foraging. One resource you will spend a lot of time needing is water for your machines. And you can find dew and cacti and other plants which could be crafted into water at your work table. Or you can also buy some water from the water station. But beware, the price is always market price, so it's not set in stone. Once you start scavenging old junk parts and mining the ruins, one of the resources you will find are data disks. You can use these disks in the research center to acquire information to upgrade your machines or learn the blueprints for new ones. I highly suggest the dew collector as this will help you gather enough water to keep your machines humming along. I'm uh, still working on making mine. I really need to find some marble. To make money, commissions will be one of your first ways. But at the start, you will only be able to select one commission at a time. So choose carefully. And if you happen to have the items on hand, the game will alert you to how many you have in your inventory. So you may be able to complete a mission right away, freeing up your time for other tasks. To keep your workshop running smoothly, you'll need machines and lots of them. I highly suggest making at least two recyclers at the start as this is a machine that you will use pretty often. And for all of the machines, using dregs as fuel is the way to go. You'll find them pretty often in scrap, down in the mines, and in lots of places. And using those means you won't use up your valuable resources. Sand fishing can be a bit tricky to learn at the start. Make sure you take a few sand worms that you've gathered up along the way. And when you reach the sand fish pit, toss in a worm, line up your basket to throw. When the fish come for the worm, toss your basket in, and there you go. Inventory space will fill up quickly very quickly due to all of the various resources available. Luckily, you are able to increase your inventory slots whenever you need, provided you have the goals to do so. For the first page of each single inventory slot costs 10 goals and you can buy as many as you like. However, the price per slot will increase for additional pages, but you should be making some pretty good money by then. There are chests that can be found all around, some in obvious places and some a bit more out of the way. After grabbing the goodies inside, you can also break down the boxes for much needed resources. Also, you'll find some junk along the ground that you can clean up. Cleaning those up takes just a second, doesn't use stamina, and will provide you a little bit of experience and some resources. When in the ruins, you'll have to mine your way down to the entrance of the next level. So that means you will use lots of stamina. So be sure to bring along some stamina increasing food that you can buy from the Blue Moon Saloon and make good use of the TNT you'll find scattered along the ruins floor. Touch them and they'll blow after a few seconds and you can collect any items that drop and you won't have to use any stamina. If you want to save in multiple save slots, then when you go to save, be sure to click Click and select the location that you want. Otherwise, it will overwrite the slot that holds your most recently played game file. If you do not go to bed on time, you will not be very well rested when you awake the next day. You'll um see it written all over your face. <laughs> And the day ends at 3 a.m., so be sure to get your rest. When you see the flashing light bulb at the bottom of the screen, it means that you have points to add to your skill tree, so be sure to increase your skills as often as you can. You do not always have to fulfill a townsperson request right away. If you say no, they will have an exclamation point over their head to indicate they are still waiting for you to return to accept the request. The storage chests that you make are linked, so you do not have to go from chest to chest to check them all. Just click at the top to see what is inside each one and to keep your storage nice and organized. Be sure to subscribe for more of my time at Sandrock. I hope you found this helpful.